when we go inside and keep in mind it's sort of in storage right now we'll get another video out when the weather gets warmer but um yeah coming inside here let's just see what we got so basically we have the sleeping area up top i don't have it set up for camping because i'm not camping in here in the middle of winter but um these so these red uh, cushions they're basically the cushions that i bought with all the old doors and windows off an old truck camper and i just reupholstered them so it acts as a cot this space up here it's just over six feet and it's just about i think it's four foot and change so that would allow two people to sleep up here snugly but they could sleep up there or one person quite comfortably all right uh, some other things going on in this camper. So in addition to that sleeping area, this area down here, believe it or not, seconds as, a, as another sleeping area. Right now, however, it's the sitting area. So you can actually sit down here and it's quite comfortable. It's got this table. This table is actually removable and it, it's, it's removable quite quickly. So if I were to twist this all right so I just twisted that and basically it came off so all this is is basically two flanges that are used in plumbing for toilets you can see one is down there on the ground okay so I actually screw that one to the to the floor of the camper and then I screw another one to the base of this table and then I just have a piece of piece of ABS pipe here, so typical plumbing drain pipe. And that's what's used to create a, a quick disconnect table. All right. So if you had uh, if you had a reason to need someone else to sleep, what I came up with was this is permanent. So this is a this is a permanent fixture in the camper. It doesn't move. But this part down here, and it's frozen sort of right now, but I'll get it out. This part actually folds up. And then I have two bars, one here that goes to here, and one here that goes to here. They're just old, uh, they're almost like tent poles. So they go in there and they support this fold out. And then what you can do is you have another sleeping area here. It's good because it's not a permanent sleeping area. You don't have to have it uh, up all the time. You only have it up when it's actually time to sleep. Right? Uh, some other things going on in this camper. So, <clears throat> moving the... Let's throw those up there for now. Moving these cushions out of the way. Now, if you can imagine, from here to here would sit inside the wheel wells of the truck. Over here, you're going to start to get the bed rails. So you're going to start to get the edge of the bed of the truck. Now, some snow in there. The mice have probably tried to make their way in here at one point. But you do have that little void between the bed rail and the actual inside of the wheel well. So you have a space above the wheel well. What I did was I maximized the use of that space for storage. So this area is storage. Okay, you'll notice it's got a bottom and it's not as deep as the floor because it has to go above the, above the, uh, the wheel well. But I just used some, some old hinges I have and uh, the piece of plywood that was one piece here, I just cut in half. The part that's over the bed rail, I made made stationary, made permanent. The part that's over the wheel well, I put on a hinge. Okay. <clears throat> uh, what else we got going on here? So the back here, you'll notice that some of the wiring is visible. I got switches here. That switch actually runs the light outside. So outside the door you saw. This light, very similar to ones you'd find in your home. These are only going to come on, so there's one here. If I turn around, there's one right here. These are only going to come on when I have the generator running. All other lighting is going to come from these guys. 
There's one here, here, here. What else we got? Oh, right there. As you can see, there's a bunch of them all over the camper. These lights were actually a really good deal. These are off of Amazon. These are used for lighting up like the back of a construction van. Okay, so these run off of an accessory battery, very similar to a battery you'd have in your car that sits in the camper. I don't have it in here right now because I haven't been using this camper, but it actually sits in here and I usually have it sitting. Actually, I got it right back in here. And so those lights are all powered. So you can see the, uh, the connections coming in here. Those lights are all powered off of that accessory battery. And then that trickle charger solar panel hooks up to that same battery as well. What this is, this is basically to allow me to run a cigarette lighter adapter for certain other things like a, uh, a phone charger can run off that accessory battery, All right? So that's the electrical system. Uh, one thing I should point out, every individual light here, I hooked up a switch. These are just little toggle switches. That's a Amazon special as well. The reason I did so was so that I could control what lights I had on at what times. You'll notice up where you're sleeping here, I have a light right here and a switch right there. So if you want to read at night, have that on with all the other lights off or any combination uh, of, of other lights. Okay. <clears throat> okay, other things going on in here. Uh, as I mentioned, we have gas that comes in. We have propane that comes in. It comes in right here. And the reason I have lots of hose space here is so that when I have a heater going, I have a little infrared little buddy heater. Um, I can actually set it on the floor because heat rises and, um, and have it run directly off of this, this 20 pound propane line as opposed to the small green ones. Um, also when I'm cooking, so I have, uh, I have a little, let's hold these down here. I have a little space up here. It's a little countertop that I can put a propane cook stove on and I can hook it directly to this propane line, right? You'll notice here, I have a hole right here. The reason being is if I'm not running the heater, what I'll do is instead of having this line, out this way, I'll actually run it directly through the the, uh, the countertop there up to where the actual cooktop is going to be. Right. Now, with the thought of propane being burned in here, although we have great ventilation, all the doors are screened, the windows are screened, we have a screen on the vent here, I also have a carbon monoxide and carb, uh, excuse me, um, smoke alarm. All right, so I make sure that's in here. I never leave the heater going while I'm sleeping. I usually just, when I wake up, if it's chilly, I'll turn on the heater and uh, just have it going for a few minutes. And if I'm cooking, I usually have the door wide open and I make sure it's uh, fully ventilated. Okay. Uh, some other things going on in here. Although it's quite dirty, it looks like the mice have been in here enjoying the camper. Um, this sink here is basically an old camper sink it came off the same truck camper that all the windows did this sink here drains directly out the side so i'm not pouring in heavy grease or anything in here but anytime you're rinsing your dishes or that it goes right outside if you want to check out the uh the plumbing here you can see here i just have some simple plumbing right two drains into one and then outside and what I do outside is, this little strainer, it actually mounts... It actually mounts right over top. It mounts right over top of the, the drain pipe. And the reason being is, it doesn't allow any critters, including insects and everything else, to get back up into the camper through the, through the drain. Right, Coda? Um, some other things going on in the camper here. 
Okay, you're fine. Some other things going on in the camper here. I didn't want to have cabinet doors. They just add weight and they're kind of cumbersome. You can bump into them. So what I ended up doing was just creating these uh, these little pull, pull across drapes. These are basically just springs covered in like a plastic and they have a little bit of uh, spring back to them. So I fabricated up these drapes, threaded them through the the uh, spring here, the plastic spring I'll call them, and then I just use little eye hooks to hold it in place. So if they need to come off, they can, and if they don't, you just hook them back up. All right, so I put those all the way around, and you'll notice I put them up top where the storage is as well. Okay, um, down here in this opening here, looks like I gotta get a, Get a vacuum out the mice have been all after this and if you're in canada you know all about that and they'll find their way anywhere but this space here is where i keep the microwave so as i mentioned before when i have a generator hooked up i can actually run a microwave in addition to all the typical outlets you find in your home all right so the microwave normally sits here i just keep some storage area up here i use these bungee cords just to keep everything in place so that when I'm driving, they don't bounce all over the place. All right. Um, yeah, what else I got here? So under this side, you saw already the plumbing, but other things I have in here, I keep the garbage in here, um, assuming it doesn't smell too bad. Otherwise I throw it outside in that, that milk crate. Over here, I have more storage. I guess we got storage up there storage down here and some other things I got going on I have those same style doors that I have on the other side so that allows me to get maximum storage space possible um, in that void space between the bed rail and the the actual I guess inside portion of the wheel well there's a few inches there that's just dead space so you have to also have access to that area because if you don't want to hook this camper down to the truck with the old chain style and that bar going under the frame, you have to actually access this area because that's where the tie down points are. So I have this huge uh, uh, eye bolt here. And then if this was in the truck, there'd be a D, bolt, a D ring right here. I can strap from here to that D ring on all four corners in order to ensure the camper is fully secured. Okay. And once again, I have these in place to keep anything I store in here up in where it should be. All right, let's look at the upper storage here. Let's move all this junk back out of the way. <clears throat> upper storage. So there was space above the countertop up just before the roof. So what I did was I built this storage space and all it is is just an elevated area. I like to keep dishes and odds and ends. And then I secure with these bungee cords. So it keeps everything in place. I can reach my hand in there and grab whatever I need, but it uh, keeps it up out of the way. To keep it from looking junky, once again, I use those spring style cords. I'll have to look and see where I got them from and just a piece of fabric that I put together to, uh, to hide everything. All right, so I got storage all the way across both sides of the camper. See, I got some dishes up here right now. And over here, same thing. You see lots of storage up here. And I made sure when I was building these that they were above the sight line. So when you're standing, you can see out the windows. And also when you're sitting, you're not going to be bumping your head on that. So I didn't make them stick out so far that you're going to hit your head on it. I made them recessed a little bit so that they, uh, they were a little more sightly and a little less likely to hit your head on. Okay, so that's that. Got the bins up here. And all over the place, you're probably seeing these things. And all these are, I got the idea off of uh, dollar store shoe racks. So basically you could buy these. I'm... I made these, but the shoe racks, um, they just have a whole bunch of little pockets. I find in a camper having a spot for everything where it's not going to roll off a counter or 
whatever is uh, what you need. So these worked out quite well. So got them there and uh, got them there. Okay. <clears throat> uh, some other things going on here. Uh, let's see. So here is the, here is the, I guess the dividing window, which would, if you went through, would be where the similar window is in the truck. So this is great because you can open this and reach right into the truck, essentially, if you're actually on the truck. Uh, the camper was on the truck. Um, it also gives you a bit of light. So it gives you light in this way um, when the camper is not on the truck. Just like every other window in here, I have these curtains. Oh, looks like the mouse got into that one. Hopefully it's not in here still. Nope. Um, I've got these little curtains that pull all the way across every window. Let's see, they pull all the way across. Just gives you, gives you a bit of privacy. Okay, so they come all the way across. Um, some other things going on in this camper that I can touch on, uh, I guess, is storage. So I showed you upper storage, lower storage. I showed you, uh, I showed you under bench storage. That's storage under here. There's also storage, sort of in, in random places. So as I'm using the camper, I find reason to want something up out of the way, like this as an example. So I uh, use some of that spring material I had, two hooks, and uh, away you go. Here I wanted a spot I could hang a coat on when you walk in. Okay. I wanted something I could hook things to right here. And I wanted a big container or a big catch-all right here. One other thing that I found to be quite useful was these. These are, uh, these are plastic, I don't know, plastic paper holders you find on an office desk. I find them really good for reading material. So if you're camping and you read a lot, you got a spot to put your stuff up there, up out of the way. And uh, same thing with these big bags and catch-alls on the end. They just get stuff up out of the way. Uh, I think that is basically it in here. Um, just one other thing I'm going to mention before I before I pull out of this spot. It's kind of cumbersome in the winter. But um, this down here, we'll just see if we can lift it up. This looks like carpet, but this actually isn't carpet. It's actually, it's actually a piece of rubberized mat, like you'd find at, uh, I don't know, the entrance to someone's garage or something. So I found this to be very useful because it makes it feel a little more comfortable. It's a little warmer on your feet when you walk in. Um, as opposed to the three quarter inch plywood sheet that's actually down. So piece of this rubberized uh, piece of this rubberized matting works quite well. Just cut it to fit. Gives you something to uh, something to feel a little more homely with. Um, other than that, you'll see a lot of plywood floating around, and you'll notice the framing on the roof. The framing on the roof is two by fours, and the reason I did that is I wanted to actually be able to go on the roof and have it structurally sound in the event that I had to do some repair or maybe I was going to store something up there. But uh, yeah, so majority of this, half inch plywood on the walls, three quarter inch plywood on the floor, two by four framing. So the majority of the framing is all two by fours. So you can see in behind here, it's two by fours. Up underneath of here, up along the ceiling or up along the roof, two by fours. Roof is two by fours. Um, that piece, that horizontal piece you see there goes all the way to the front peak of the, of the camper. That's all one piece to maintain rigidity. The piece that goes across side to side is two by fours. So it's all framed using structural, structural lumber. <clears throat> all right. I think that's about it. So next time, once I get this operational, I'll get this up onto the truck and you guys can see how that works but it's a really cheap camper and because it's got basically all the things you need it's got power it's got uh, it's got heating capabilities cooking capabilities because it has those things it's uh, it's really quite comfortable so 
Next time I'll talk about how I actually um, hook it to the truck, how I um, utilize the electrical system in the truck for this, this battery, the accessory battery, and how it really comes to be. So anyways, thanks for watching.